I was born just before the beginning of World War II in 11 Crummock Street, Carlisle, to Nell and John Osgood. I was named Morris after my mother's father, Morris Walter Sweetman, who was buried in Britford Churchyard, just south of Salisbury. I attended Coldigate Primary School, a rather deprived area of Carlisle, but after success in the 11 plus exam, I moved to Carlisle Grammar School, one of 90 new boys. The grammar school was a very classical school. Greek, Latin and divinity were considered the most important. But during my time there, more scientific subjects, including biology, became more important. After the O-level Oxford exams, the chief maths teacher, Mr. Archer, pointed out a notice board letter offering a five-year management apprenticeship course at the Carlisle Tannery, J.T. Scott. I applied for this and had an interview with Elwood Scott, the managing director. He showed me round the tannery and I was really fascinated and excited about it and wanted the job. Fortunately, I was accepted and spent the whole of my working life in the leather industry. Coming to my first record, my interest in popular music at that time was firstly with skiffle, music groups about the same time as rock and roll. And Lonnie Donegan was one of the best. And the Rock Iron Line was the one that I've chosen. Great, so let's go on to play uh, Lonnie Donegan's Rock Island Line. Now this is the story about the Rock Island Line. Now the Rock Island Line is a railroad line and it runs down into New Orleans. And just outside of New Orleans is a, a big toll gate. And all the trains that go through the toll gate, why, they got to pay the man some money. Unless, of course, they got certain things on board and they okay and they don't ever have to pay them for nothing and right now we see a train she coming on down the line and when she get up near to the toll gate the uh, the depot agent shout down to the driver he want to know what he got on board so he say uh, what you got on board there boy and the driver he sing right on back down the depot agent tell him what he got on board he had the way he sing i got sheep i got cows i got horses I got pigs, I got all livestock, I got all livestock, I got all livestock. And the man said, well, he said, you're all right then, boy, you don't have to pay me nothing, just get him on through. So the train goes through the toll gate, and as it goes through, he got up a little bit of steam and a, a little bit of speed. And when he's safely on the other side of the toll gate, the, the driver shout back down the line to the man. Of course, you don't get what he say now, going home and going down the Rock Island line. So he said, but I fooled you, I fooled you, I got pig iron, I got pig iron, I got all pig iron. Your wife and so I want to say, oh, well, why, what was so great about Lonnie Donegan's Rock Island line? With Where did you hear it first? Oh, must have been on the radio. It would be Radio Luxembourg, I would think, in those days. Did you, have a, did you have a radio in the house then, A big that, that, that big wireless thing that you had? Or... Radiogram. Radiogram. So you didn't have a little mobile thing that you had under the sheets or something like that? So... No, it weren't invented then. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to subject you... Um, you the first radio... And, the first radio we ever had had, had little uh, glass bottle batteries which you had to take to the chemist shop to get charged oh, and bring oh. them back so, so that you could listen to the radio. It was just after the cat's whiskers were invented. <laughs> <laughs> so did so when you were listening to the radio, did you did you have to 
negotiate with uh, with your dad and gran about what you listen to and when, or did you just dominate yeah. it like I would have done in your house? No, we had to go, well, uh, I, I would try and listen to things I wanted, but if they wanted a particular programme, I would defer to them. Right. So, and then Lonnie Donegan, Rock Island Line, wasn't on that often. Well, not like it's on every 10 minutes, so... Oh. You must have come across it by accident. It was very popular at that time. Did you not buy any, uh, like, vinyl with records with it? Or? Uh, somewhere I should have that record, but I can't find it. <laughs> so you actually went out and bought it? It was a 45. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Island Line was on one side. I can't remember what the other side was. So, and that this was like when you'd already started at Scott's then when you were? No, no, before then. Right, still at school? Uh, yes, yes. Cool. So, following on from that, listening to the radio a lot, I was growing up with The Goon Show, with Spike Milligan, Harry Seacombe and Peter Sellers, with a very different humour and ability to take many characters in such an, an unusual way. This, this is where my mother and father disagreed with, with me listening to it. They thought they were, they were stupid. It's a bit like the modern day Monty Python. The second record comes from Peter Sellers' album, Best of Sellers, and has so many great impressions, it's difficult to single out one. But this is my choice. And it's suddenly it's folk. Three folk songs collected in hi-fi. The first one is from Somerset and has captured the spirit of the gay happy farmer. It was recorded in the Brewer's Elbow, a local beer house. Ah. And our wood one fine morning, I spy the lass there with a mopperty dollick in number dumbed eye. She asked I the right way to muck bottom fair, and I up and I showed her the way. Oh, I won't have that dog from running your lot. I tell you. Hey, look here, lads, please, lads, the record. The record, lads. Careful, let my microphone. Now that's going to be very difficult to follow. So, for your next choice, Dad. The third or fourth forms at the grammar school, I was introduced to the Lake District by the senior maths master, Geoffrey Archer, known as Dickie. He introduced me to fell walking in the Lake Districts, but later to the Highlands of Scotland, the Coolings of Skye and the Southern Uplands of Galloway. This love of high places and the beauty around them has remained and grown all my life. This choice of Sibelius has always been special and that it epitomizes the grandeur, the power of mountains, lakes, and the high places. Sibelius's second symphony and the second movement.
Our next record reminds me of a country discovered late in life, Australia. Now the Seekers were an Australian group. And although the next record is not Australian, the group was, and I have become very fond of them. In geography, it's a, a really wild life, flora, are really amazing. If I had known it at an early age, I feel sure I would have emigrated to Australia. This is the Seekers record, World of Our Own. Close the door, light the light, we're staying home tonight, far away and the bright city lights Let them all fade away Just leave us alone And we'll live in a world of our own We'll build a world of our own That no one else can share All our sorrows we'll leave far behind us there And I know you will find There'll be peace of mind That's the one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Quite, quite cool now because of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Living a week of our own. <laughs> <laughs> Very applicable. Yeah, it's a world of our own. Yeah. Cool. Now, dur during my working life, I visited a lot of countries, especially Latin countries. They've opened my eyes to life that it's not just work, but food, wine, historic <laughs> places. <laughs> And this Concerto Rodriguez, the blind Spanish composer, epitomizes Iberia for me. I chose the second movement of this as being especially Spanish. come across this track then is that where would you have been in Portugal or South America or uh, probably on the radio or something yeah so um, what memories does that bring back then it's being stuck on aeroplanes in grotty airports all over the world no it reminds me more of the countries that you pass through you know you can go France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, even Greece. There's, there's always something special about Latin countries. They, they work, but much more serious thing is, is eating and drinking. <laughs> and that's where the great love of, uh, what was your nickname at Earnshaw's? Five Puds. Yeah, something like that, yes. <laughs> Morris five puds because you'd have five puddings. <laughs> well, that nicely brings it brings us on to the the next part. In the twenty seven years I worked for Earnshaws, every September the Semaine de Queer was held in Paris, and I attended most, if not all. Many times, including Caroline, we went with Joan Betty Titmus and had tremendous fun and visit many places in northern France prior to the actual Semaine de Queer. This next record by a famous French singer of the past, Charles Trenet, 
recall some of those times. <laughs> Il s'aimait depuis deux jours à peine Il y a parfois du bonheur dans la peine Mais depuis qu'ils étaient amoureux Leur destin n'était plus malheureux Ils vivaient avec un rêve étrange Et ce rêve était bleu comme les anges Leur amour était un vrai printemps, oui Aussi pur que leur tendre vingt ans C'est la romance de Paris but surely they didn't force you to listen to French music because I guess it was on the radio in the car. Well, I, I used to uh, visit the south of France quite a bit on business and that, the, the, usually the agent and the technician I was with would have the French radio on the car. All and, right. Uh, okay. That, that's probably where I started to hear it. In actual fact, that the, the most famous one of his is called La Mer, which is on the other side of, of the disc that I've chosen. Oh, okay, well, I know that one, that's the C. Yes. Um, but at that time, when you were travelling, is that when you started to learn a lot of languages? Because you speak pretty good yeah. French and Spanish and Portuguese and... We just had to pick it up in those days because, uh, well, for example, I was I was sent to North Africa to French-speaking countries like Senegal and Morocco, Tunisia occasionally, and not so many people spoke English, especially in the tanneries. And therefore, you, you just had to survive by having a go at speaking French. And also, I used to, when I got back to England, I used to go to evening classes. Right. Um, various places and, and took lessons in both, both that and uh, Spanish as well. Right. And the only one I never really tried was, was Italian. But now I find that I can understand quite a bit of Italian because it's very similar to either Spanish or, or Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. Latin based. Yeah. And yes, and of course in, in Portugal, um in the tanneries there, all, all the all the workers they, they only spoke Portuguese. So gradually, bit by bit, you, you picked it up and uh prob probably not very good Portuguese, but everybody has always said that when I do speak, the accent is, is very correct. Yeah. So some compensation for the bad grammar and the naughty and words. Yes. Uh, well, I'm in the same boat now, Dad. So. <laughs> yeah. Great. Following this, more or less coming back to this country, the love of the British countryside has been with me for as long as I can remember. This piece by De Delius paints a picture, perhaps of a time that is gone replaced by the hustle and bustle of modern life and business. But this is a time I like to remember anyway. So Delius's Brick Fair is my next choice.
So where does it take you in your brain? But to, to the Lake District or? Back up to the Solway, I think. Okay. Solway Plain. I used to bike out at night after school or work. It was about uh, six or seven miles to Bruff Marsh. I used to go on my bike, the bike that I still have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The rally. Which, which I bought for £29, 10 shillings <laughs> in 19. In, when would it be 54 I think yes. with my first paycheck from but Scott. I bought it in purchase I think I paid 10 shillings a week <laughs> or maybe it was a month <laughs> fantastic so were you on your own then or did you go out with your mates to usually, usually I was on my own yeah and go walking or just well, yeah. Once, once you got out there, you had to you had to walk over the marshes because there was great big um, sort of little, little ditches with running water in, which because it was tidal, they could they could come up quickly and catch you oh, out. So yeah. you had to do a lot of jumping. Yeah, and of course, it's fa famous for waders around there, and also. Um, Nesting birds like lapwing and curlew were always around, so you always got the, the haunting cry of the curlew. Mm. Is and that where you love the bird spotting comes from then, from going out there? Or? That, that came from earlier on, which uh, really leads me on to the next record. I started bird watching as a young lad, probably by listening to Uncle Mac on Children's Hour, which was the radio program about five o'clock tea time. And I bought the Observer's Book of British Birds, which incidentally I still have. Of course you do. And I, I remember <laughs> cycling out to Brough Marsh to see waders such as Lapwing, Redshank, Curlew, as well as the Skylarks. And this piece by Vaughan Williams, The Lark Ascended, brings back those memories. Quite interesting that uh, I've, I've met up with my old school schoolboy chum Derek Collins, and he he was telling me, and I didn't know this, that uh, he got interested in birds because I was interested in birds, and I must have led him on into it. <laughs> right. Because we, we used to go out together walking, and of course we started walking with Mr. Archer at the grammar school together. And we went on holidays in Scotland with, with him and occasionally Peter Ross as well, another Crummock Street lad. Yeah. Oh, Peter. And then you go, what, to the lakes as well and on weekends? Yes, yeah. the lakes more, well, very often on Saturdays. Yeah. And then, and then later on when I left school, we used to go on the Fell Walker bus on a Sunday, which left from uh, the Ribble bus station, and it went to either Buttermere or Seathwaite. And uh, we had the day to climb and then rush back about uh, four o'clock to get the bus back to Carlisle. <laughs> Did you ever miss it? 
No, no, I don't think we ever did. No, but uh, it was a damn fine run thing sometimes. <laughs> Especially if you were rock climbing. Yeah, I bet. Marvellous. So he was responsible for your love of the lakes then, I guess. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened to him? Well, he, uh, he continued till he retired, but sadly he didn't live very long after he retired. He had uh, colon cancer and he died from that. Oh, dear. I was working at Scott's at the time, and I remember going to see him just before he died. It was very sad, probably in the 60s oh. when he died. Oh. But he, what, what, after he died, uh, his housekeeper, he was never married, he, he lived... Uh, up uh, Blackwell, Blackwell Road on the way out to Bruff. And his housekeepers told me afterwards that uh, he said I could, after he died, that I could go up and select a book from amongst his collection of books. And I have that book today, which is uh, the Towns of the Lake District. All oh, right. Paintings in it by Heaton Cooper, very famous. Uh, watercolor painter of Lake District scenes. Great, that's really nice. Nice story. Is that your selection, Dad? That is my selection, which I found extremely difficult to restrict. <laughs> yeah, because can... there, there are tons more that I'd like to have put in, but uh, I thought these these were a wider selection of varying types otherwise there'd have been a lot more classical music in it the only one that i, I probably should have put in was the one about the sun has got his hat on And he's coming out today Now we'll all be happy Hip, 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 hooray The sun has got his hat on And he's coming out I used out to today. sing this one to you While you were small I, I remember it very well I'm a more North Allerton Yes, that's synonymous with uh, the early days Yeah, yeah, yeah Everywhere Yes <laughs> That was really good uh, I also, I didn't choose my wife's signature tune, <laughs> Sweet Caroline. All oh, right. <laughs> no, that's her choice, maybe. Uh, so I have to, we have to sort of finish this with, uh, when you're on your desert island, you have to, you get to choose um, a book to take with you. A book to take with me? Again. Yeah very difficult but I think the one I would like to take is called A Journey to Portugal by Jose Saramago who was uh, awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. Um, it's a book translated into English and it, it, it's a very good read. It's about him coming back. I think he was probably living in France and he came back to Portugal and wrote this book about different places because he obviously entered by road rather than by plane mm -hmm. and uh, it's a book that I've read two or three times and I, I can always go back to it and find something interesting in it. Excellent, so that will go with the, uh, the Bible and the complete works of Shakespeare that you're allowed to take as well. And, yes, yeah. and then you're allowed one luxury item. So what well, would that be? The luxury item, I don't know how you get it there, but it will be a battle of, of port. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I'm sure. 
and what you'd have to keep it um, cooled nicely so you'd have to dig a hole and fill it with water and yeah well i mean you can drink port at, at ambient temperature so that wouldn't be a problem for me <laughs> uh, brilliant that's i'm sure that uh, that could be arranged quite easily <laughs> don't know how old i don't think it'll be like the one we got you for your 80th no i was thinking about that if you've been <laughs> If you'd been here for Christmas, I would have opened it, but I'll, I'll hold it hold it back for another year. Well, I've think, got other and drink. <clears throat> wasn't the plan to save it for the uh, the wedding anniversary, the big 60th next year? Well, I, could, I might do that, yes. <laughs> we don't want too many people around to share it, though, do we? The trouble, there's only six glasses in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do it on the slide sometime, Dad. <laughs> so, from all of those records, you have to pretend so the um, so the desert island discs thing go that the waves are waves are getting higher and you can only save one of them. So out of all of the, your choices of records, which would be the one that you'd choose to save? Oh gosh, that's difficult. Um, <laughs> I think it's be either the Lark Ascending or the Sibelius. Um, Definitely the classical uh, songs that you go for. I think so, oh, yes, yes. Always because they, they last longer. <laughs> uh, some tightness in there somewhere, legendary. Yes, yes. <laughs> you get more bang for your buck out of a yes. classical 15-minute record. Well, that's I brilliant. Think the, the Lark Ascending, probably, because it's got the sound of the birds on it. And you might get a bit bored if you're on a, a desert island because the birds would be uh, not not nesting on there probably they would be flying past or uh, migrating past so at least i would be able to hear a bit of bird song that's very true that's very true that's wonderful all right dad well i think we've done all right there i think that's great so uh, thank you very much for the Desert Island this